All right, this horse, three weeks ago, we did a little deal on the uh, Hackamore. And uh, I showed you that I had to really open my hands so that he'd understand it, having come from a thoroughbred race farm. This had never happened to him. It was all this. So knowing that, which is why I always talk about kind of know what you're riding. Where'd it come from? What happened? If you don't know, figure it out. Anyway, he now has figured out and connected the dots of starting to listen to my body. So that was what I was after. And I don't have to open my hands up so much anymore. So I've crossed that bridge. Now it took three weeks to accomplish what you're about to see. And I'm going to show you three things. Is the stop, the turnaround, and a start of collection and self-carriage. So before I start, I want to show you that what we run into back east, especially because of the humidity, is that the horse is ridden in a hackamore. It's really hard for everybody back there because of that humidity. They take the hair off them real easy. Well, this horse is a thoroughbred and he's no different. So I took the hair off him, so I put wallet leather on the bars of my bosal. This is real soft leather. And then Deb put some kind of hoodoo oil on it to keep it soft. And so now I also adjusted the nose band so that it's below the mark that I made. And this will grow back, it's not like he needs therapy. And the, the reason I'm doing what I'm telling you is because you can adjust your hackamore right here by letting in and out your cheek pieces. So I've got that going on. That's what I wanted to show you. And you guys back east don't don't feel bad. You're up against the wall, especially in the summertime with this hackamore humidity thing on a thin hided horse. It's just I've watched it and I know some good hands back there and they can't help it. So I don't know what to tell you except move. Now I'm gonna do the stop a couple different times just because I need to get the horse prepared for what I want. <sighs> but it's basically I lift, I sit, and I exhale. Now my hand started off doing this in a halter. And when I'm all done, you won't see my hand move. So I'm, I'm, I'm at that stage now where it's still pretty overdone just to make a point. So the horse knows to stop. Now I'm gonna do it without my hand and that's how you find out if the horse is listening to your body or not. And just as a side note, when you teach these horses something, Start off at a walk and don't go out of a walk until you know they've got it really well. Then you don't betray them. So I'm going to set him up to stop again. I'm as high as I can get to my seat bones. <sighs> That's my point. Okay, at a very slow, relaxed walk, this horse can understand. If I was loping circles right now and did that, I'll never know if it'd work or not because I'm not going to do it. Now the turnaround, you watch my left elbow. You'll see that I'm getting that eyeball. Now I've got the eye, my right hand is quiet. And for those of you that didn't see it, I was having to ride this horse like this to help him. Now I don't have to. Now my right elbow, I bump and I give it back. Every time you touch a horse with a hackamore, you better give it back. If you hang on him, just ride English. Bump. Now I'll open my shoulder, put my left leg on, and ask that front end to cross. Now what I, what I want you to notice is that as soon as the body started to move on the horse, I released. I let that horse free up from the shoulders forward. I didn't guide him around. And what that told me was that yes, I can feel your leg and I will respond to your leg. Now I'm gonna do it with my right leg. I'm not gonna ask him till he's right. He's prepared right now for left turn. So I'm going to say the word now when I put my right leg on. Shoulder, leg. He started to fall forward. Now what I meant was is his front leg started to go forward out of the turn. So I bumped him. 
then he made it and he stepped across. If I'm turning to the left and they start to step forward, I bump with the outside hand to shift them to the hind quarter. So I don't confuse them between direction, which I've already given, and shifting. So another way to test this, ride an inside rein short, because this horse, I'm going to be roping off him. So I need to have a free hand. I'll rope off him in a hackamore. So I've got a short rein to the inside. Bump, bump. If you look at my reins right now, you'll notice the left rein shorter. Open my shoulder, sit back. As I pull back, the right rein comes tight and he makes it. Now I'll switch hands and my right rein is shorter. So when I take my shoulder, my right shoulder, he takes the rein with it. That's what sets me up for my turn. Pull straight back and I shift to the hind quarter and he's able to reach over. I'm using my outside leg and or spur to accomplish this. So I'll just keep building on this until I have a 360 degree horse walking around his body. One handed. Now you can hear them and you can feel them when they don't reach across. You'll hear them hit the ground, you'll hear them hit their other foot. Well, okay, keep going. They don't like hitting their own foot, they'll figure it out. Shoulder, outside leg, outside leg, reach, 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 reach. Now, watch. Wasn't as clean to the right. That's all right. Set it up again. Reach. There's a brace. Reach. Good. Slow it down. Bump. Reach. I'll break it down for you again, horse. If you're having a hard time, I'll break it down for you. Now, what we're going through right now is perfect. This is what's real, okay? He's having hell going to the right. Well, okay, I'm gonna break it down. Now what he does is he has a little bit of a temper and then he gets over it like within seconds. I just broke it down. The time I spent from standing over there babbling to riding over here and asking, he just made it and took a deep breath. Now the temper deal's over. He's fine. Had I crowded him too much over there, he would have got up in the air and then and his mind would have been lost. I wouldn't have taught him anything. He wouldn't have learned anything except to get madder. If there's such a word. So now I'll set it up again. He's fine. When I ride a horse, depending on the age of the horse and where I'm at, and I hate to cop out on you, but like for example, if I go for a 10, 15 mile ride, I usually spend about 10 minutes schooling the horse. And the rest of the time I'm riding, just moving out, get them going, up and down, learning how to carry me, carry themselves. And then over all these 10 minute periods, after X amount of time, they just put it together. I don't want them to have to learn things under duress. I don't want them to learn things in drilling. There's a time when I need to be in this corral to have a disciplined ride, like today. It's a perfect time for this horse to see and show me where he's at. Now I'm gonna put him in a jog and set him up to carry himself. Now, not, not just the fact of him getting in self-carriage, but I get to utilize my leg to move his rib over and I keep giving the rein back, you'll watch him move off my leg and I'm riding the horse at a very slow jog with my body because he, in fact, is carrying himself in self-courage. Bumping down, I lower my hands, I get the nose, right, left, there it is. I look where I wanna go. Right leg lays on my horse because I'm looking to the left. 
I'm going to stop. Now, as he stopped, he stopped nice and clean, but he pushed on my hand. Okay, well, that's fine. Next time I won't let him push on my hand, but the fact is, I just quit riding and he stopped. That's more important to me than pushing on the hand right now. I'll fix that. But in other words, he's listening to my body. That's how I know. Inside leg, rounding out the horse. Inside leg. I keep giving the rein back. I want him to carry himself. I'm going to stop halfway across the trail. Now that time my left hand was there. So in case he wanted to push, it didn't, I'll never know. It never got to happen because I bumped him. Because last time he didn't make it. This is what's important. Now he gets to relax, stretch out his neck, and know that he's not working for a living because I haven't clocked him in. When he starts to read my hands, as I go to pick this up, he's going to put himself in self-carriage. Now that could be seven videos from now, it could be one. That's his deal, that isn't up to me. All I gotta do is be consistent. I'm about to pick up these reins. He gets to choose which way he wants to go. Now, he rocked back. I just won the world. And I realize my little sessions that I show you are pretty damn simple and they're not a whole lot to them, but that's the point. He just rocked to the hindquarter. Well, I can take the rest of the day off. I'm not gonna, but I could. Thank you.